Hello, welcome to this video. My name is Mark Oliver Parle and I'm the lead organizer of Menschsein mit Algorithmen, being human with algorithms. I want to tell you what it is and I also want to report you about a great event that we had last year with the German chapter of the ACM in Heidelberg on September 20th and 21st. In the back, by the way, you see Heidelberg and if you've never been there or if you've been there, I can highly recommend coming again or going there all over the year. Beautiful place. Here is the castle. In the background you see the Rhine Valley. But let's get started. So, what happened in September? Well, last year the German chapter of the ACM turned 50. The ACM is the Association for Computing Machinery. It's the biggest association of computer scientists and people that have to do with computers or informatics and in the ACM, we are discussing on effects that computer programs, algorithms, technical stuff have on society. We look at how we can improve in our profession and so on. And one thing we especially look at in the ACM is what are the effects of this so-called digital transformation? So the change that comes with the computerization of the world, of all aspects that you have there. And Last year, the German chapter turned 50, so it's one of the oldest chapters, and we did a great celebration event, which I was the main organizer for, and we had invited several great people that were giving us wonderful insights on this digital transformation. And in this video, I want to report you a little bit about the event and our ongoing activities in this direction, namely into getting into discussion with you, with the society, on this digital transformation, what it means for you, what challenges, but also which opportunities are coming with this digital transformation that is happening around us that cannot be stopped, but that can be shaped, not only by the computer scientists like me, but also by you as a society. So it's an effort that we as a society at large have to do and we want to contribute to it, and our symposium was one way to do so. Okay, so the entire thing was quite an effort that I did, of course, not alone. So I had my colleagues from the German chapter of the ASM, Gerhard Schempf, Ernst Oliver Wilhelm, and Eberhard Schmolz, and they did a great job in co-organizing the event in different roles. Okay. The entire event was quite big. We had around 80 people participating and it would not have been possible without our kind sponsors that supported our event. So here you see a list of the sponsors and I want to point out those that are in red. So you might have heard about the Heidelberg Laureate Forum. So this is a yearly event where the Turing Award winners assemble together with students to give talks for one week, get into exchange. And this was founded by Klaus Chira and his Stiftung is also running this event. And they were also kindly supporting us, not only by giving us the rooms and supporting us with catering and so on. So thank you very much for that. Touring awards, by the way, if you don't know about it. So this is something like the Nobel Prize for computer scientists. So the ACM is giving this prize and it's the best and greatest prize that you can get as a computer scientist. Besides the Klaus Schirer Stiftung, we were also supported by the University of Heidelberg. They were offering us to run the start of the symposium in the Alte Aula on Friday evening and uh, on Thursday evening actually. And so this was a great venue as you will see on the pictures. And the last one I want to point out here is the ZKM in Karlsruhe, Zentrum für Kunst und Medien. This is a center for media art and Bernd Weibel and Bernd, Peter Weibel and Bernd Lindemann, they were totally open when I approached them and asked them if it would be possible to get some art to our event. Because art and technical stuff, technical talks, to me is always something very important to bring all this together. Okay, but more to that also in some minutes. So our motto is being human with algorithms. But what does it mean being human with algorithms? In German, as we are a German chapter, 
Was bedeutet Mensch sein mit Algorithmen? So, well, we can have a look at it. And I do it on this slide. So, it's all about this thing called digital transformation. And you might ask, you might ask yourself, like, okay, when is it happening? Where is it happening? Who should be concerned about it? So, who is affected? And especially, why should I care? And the picture that I chose here on the left shows you a little bit um, the answer already. Namely, there's someone walking into the digital device. And so our society is definitely going into this track here, going towards using digital things. So I don't have it in my pocket now, but when you get into your pocket, you probably have your smartphone at hand. And so this was not the case some time ago. This iconic example is also shown on the next slide that I show you here in the back. And this is exactly the Pope election in 2005 and 2013 at the bottom. And so as you know, when the white steam comes out, the new Pope is elected. And then he steps up. So at the moment he, maybe in the future also she, steps up. And people are waiting here and want to get it picture, see the, see the Pope, the new Pope. And here you see in 2005, you see basically that you see normal people. In 2013, you see lots and lots and lots of smartphone screens. And so there you already see that something probably has changed profoundly because why do all these people have these smartphones with them? And from yourself, you probably also know that you're spending a lot of time with this smartphone. And this is an important part of this digital transformation. This change in your being. So probably we're using a messenger today or surfing the internet and so on. And this all would not be possible without this digital transformation or to say the other way around. So this is what we call the digital transformation. But the digital transformation does not only affect you with your smartphone, but it also affects different aspects. And when we looked at, okay, which aspects are relevant for us in this digital transformation, we identified several areas that we find especially interesting. And these are especially the technological component that we are working on that is, of course, important for us. And then the work life, so that means your job. What do you have to do with the digital transformation there? Education, also an important domain because I am a university teacher and so I'm using digital tools for education since a long time. So I started e-learning actually back in 2003. And so when you're at university today, you cannot think about it, especially in computer science, of not having digital media and digital tools for doing things there. Then ethics is, of course, an important domain. Not everything that we can do is actually ethically and morally okay to do. So when you think about it, you could have algorithms that decide about if you should go to prison or not, or even worse. And so this might not be okay. Then society, because everything happens in society, of course. Art, also important aspect. Governance, important. Lots of changes there. Think about electronic voting and so on. And law and order as well. And so there, just to tell you an anecdote, maybe you're aware of it, maybe you're not. So. In China, for instance, which is a country where we can see where we all might also move in the future because their changes are happening faster because they are enforced by the government there. And so in China, it's totally normal today already that people are profiled all the time. So you, the government knows when they go to the doctor, they know the government knows where they go and so on. And recently, so last year, police people started using glasses with augmented reality, where when they see you on the street, they immediately get the information, okay, which is your record, who are you, and so on, and then they can interview you, track you, and so on. Okay, but this just is an anecdote of what might happen, and also, again, for telling you what this digital transformation actually is. Let's come back to our symposium. So, we had different nice speakers. So we had Vinserv, this wonderful gentleman here. And so he is well, the co-inventor of the internet. So together with Bob Kahn, he developed in the 70s the TCP IP protocol stack and much more, which holds the entire internet together. 
So your devices communicate using exactly these specifications of how they can talk to each other. The next speaker we had is Martin Arendt here, and he is at BMW, and uh, he also gave a very nice talk. Then Catherine Jamal, she's at the KI project here, and she was talking about artificial intelligence. Then Peter Weibel here from the ZKM, he's the director there. Bernd Lintermann, also a someone who's employed by Peter Weibel, and uh, he's a digital artist, and uh, both brought great exhibition pieces to us. Then the next one we have is Michael Strube here. So he does natural language processing, also an important area, because this is, for instance, about reading your emails or your chat messages and making sense of them, and he was exactly talking about such things. Then we had a second Turing Award winner, because Witsurf got one, and also here, this guy, Martin Hellman got one, and Martin Hellman is known because he invented, together with Whitfield Diffie, the so-called Diffie-Hellman key exchange, and this is what is actually happening when you surf through the web and you open a secured website. So when you have this HTTPS, where you have a green lock on the site, and uh, so he was giving a talk about ethics. Then we had Alexander Filipovich from Munich, and uh, he was talking about the role of philosophy in this digital transformation. We had uh, Francisca Böhm here. She was talking about the jurisdiction, about the role of this digital transformation towards law. And finally, we had a panel, and my ACM chapter colleague, Thomas Matzner, was organizing this panel. So as you already see, we had a great lineup. And we also had a great location and great participants. And so here you see us in the garden of the Villa Bosch, which is a location where the Klaus Scherer Foundation resides and where we kindly could run our second day of the symposium, namely the Friday, September 21st in 2018. The pictures, by the way, are, are taken by Fabian Freund, a photographer from the Rhein-Neckar Kreis, and uh, so he did a great job. And this one is actually done with a drone. And this is already showing this effects of the digital transformation, because imagine five years ago, you could not have imagined taking such a shot with a drone, because you could never have afforded it, and they were simply not available for such kind of applications. Okay, so let's start with the symposium. So. This is on Friday, on Thursday evening. So this was our reception where people are registering at the moment. Later we had the reception. This is the entrance to the Alte Aula in Heidelberg. And uh, yeah, so this is me together with Windsurf. And this is the guy I was talking about before, Whitfield Diffie. So the second guy, so he was a student of Martin Hellman when they invented this. Diffie-Hellman key exchange. All right, then the symposium opened, so I was giving an opening speech, and in the background you see already that it's a very nice place in Heidelberg that we were allowed to be in. Here you actually see the entire space, so I will briefly leave the screen so that you really get an impression. And after me, Achim Hof was giving the greetings for the chapter. Then Vincerf was delivering the greetings for the ACM, where he is always very much involved. And then we started with the first talk. And the first talk was by Vincerf, Unfinished Internet. And Vint emphasized that the internet is not finished, but we still have to work on important aspects like security, interaction with the governance, policies, and so on. So this was what he was talking about, and uh, we will in the future provide also the talks of the different people there, and then you can have a look at what he said more in detail. Here you see the audience, so we had uh, several people in the audience, also several Turing Award winners, and uh, as I said before, it's a very, very nice place in Heidelberg. Participants were in close discussion with the Turing Award winners. So this was also one of our goals, to enable this interaction between our participants of the symposium and those people that we invited to give the talks. 
here we see Beate Spiegel from the Heidelberg Laureate Forum at the Klaus Scherer Stiftung and uh, Martin Hellmann. And uh, here we see Bob Tarjan, who is also a Turing Award winner and uh, who also took some nice photographs. And after the wonderful talk by Wind, we had also a reception. And among our guests was also a delegation from the European chapters of the ICM. So they were visiting us, which was also very nice. Then the day was over and we went to the Friday. And the Friday opened with Martin Arendt, who was talking about driving and being driven, shaping the future of mobility. And so Martin was talking about that today you have automation already in the car, but it does not stop there, but it goes beyond it. And you may have in the near future assistants at home that are closely interacting with your car. So he was giving us the vision where technology might develop. Also a very, very nice talk. So Martin, thanks for being there and giving this keynote. Our next speaker was Catherine Jamal, and she was talking about artificial intelligence, not an infallible God. And uh, she was emphasizing that there's always a difference between a artificial intelligence and a human, because a human has feelings and also has a being, while the artificial intelligence is just acting according to rules and doing that. And so there will always be a difference. Also very interesting and very nice talk, Catherine. And so thank you very much for being with us that day. And then we came to Peter Weibel and Peter Weibel was talking about digital cultural techniques. And so in his talk, he focused on the effects of this digital transformation on art. Because at the ZKM, you can always see how with the digital possibilities, new ways of art become possible. And therefore, I'm very grateful, Peter, not only that you gave this wonderful talk, but also that you brought with you Bent and his colleagues and some wonderful exhibition pieces. And so, yeah, this is Peter, a close-up, and uh, this brings us already to the exhibition. So, Ben was introducing the exhibition, and uh, they brought three pieces. So they brought your code, which is a screen or a multi-screen installation where you see the transformation from the physical being into this digital being. And the digital being is indeed composed out of zeros and ones. So a very nice piece of art that Bern actually created. Then the second one they brought is alphabet sphere or alphabet space, sorry. And uh, so this is about the creation of symbols and meanings, because this is a piece that you take into your hand and you move it, and with it you can create symbols and meanings because you can write words. So this was also a very nice piece of art. And the third one that was inspired and created mainly by um, Peter. So this is the Bibliotheca Digitalis, Three Phases of Digitalization, and this is a piece where, where Peter selected some of the main literature books that are important for understanding this change from the analog world to the digital world. And uh, so Claude Shannon, for instance, and others. And so this is a very nice piece where you can see this transformation because it consists of books. You can open the books, but the books are actually containing only computer readable QR codes. And then on the wall, you see nothing. It's just bright. Only when you look through the window that is set here in front, here, then you can see that there's actually text. And the text that is shown there is actually the pages of the book. And you can flip them, and then on the window you see on the screen there, so on this uh, Windows glass screen, you see then the pages that are flipping there, and they are only artificial intelligence. Uh, I'm not sorry. They are only artificial reality. Or augmented and artificial reality because they are not there in reality. Okay, good. So yeah, thanks Ben for that. 
And uh, here you see this uh, third piece of art. So Vince Cerf and Bob Chargen are currently looking at it. And uh, as you can see, it's quite fun interacting with that because you see the book here and uh, you see the screen. And uh, yeah, if you have not seen it and it's currently exhibited somewhere, see it. Then this is the screen I was talking about. So this is again, Vint, this is checking it. And uh, it's using artificial intelligence to guess what are your properties. And so this is also interesting because this is actually used in shops already to identify if you are the target group of the ad and then showing you targeted advertisements. And as you can see, it's uh, quite accurate actually. Okay, and so this is the third piece. And this is, by the way, it's creator. And uh, this is moving this artifact here and then creating symbols out of it, texts out of it. Okay, so after the lunch break, we continued with Michael Strube, who does natural language processing. And uh, so he was emphasizing that he's in a lucky position that he's funded by the Klaus Schirer Foundation, and therefore he can select which research he wants to do, but others can't. And especially in this natural language processing, there are also dark sides ongoing, namely your messages are read, for instance, and then depending on what you are writing there, you get different context informations, and therefore one is directing your perception, and it's very, very personalized. So my, you might have heard about filter bubbles there, and so uh, this goes into that direction. Also very interesting talk. Yeah, so then after Michael, we had the next talk, and the next talk was our next Turing Award winner, and so this was Marty Hellman. And so Marty is interested also mainly through his wife, Dorothy. He's interested very much into ethics as well. And so he was giving a great talk about ethics and about the duties that you have as someone who's developing technical things like algorithms. And Marty was making the point that in whatever you do, you should take ethical decisions because only when you're practiced in doing so, even in the small things, you do not only feel better, but you're also very well prepared for the big things. So when you then have big things to do, like you're creating, let's uh, talk about maybe bombs or something like that, then you can take ethical decisions of probably not doing that because it would not be ethical. Okay, so yeah, Marty was giving the talk and uh, was also a great talk. Thanks for that, Marty. The next talk was then Alexander Filipovich, and uh, he was talking in German, and he was talking about Algorithmizität als moralische Herausforderung, philosophische Überlegungen zur Gestaltung digitaler Gesellschaften. And so Alexander was talking about the role that philosophy can have in this digital transformation. And he was saying that it is not providing the solutions to all problems, but instead it can have a guiding role and it can support people in taking good decisions and walking good path. Followed to Alexander, so after him, also wonderful talk. After him, Francisca Böhm was talking about regulation of algorithms and blockchain applications, transparency as a vehicle for more self-determination. And so she was talking about that for the jurisdiction, so for the people that make the laws and decide about cases, this AI blockchain thing is something interesting and important, but it's not, again, not the solution to all the problems. They rather have different problems and at the moment it's a little bit style, stylized as the AI and this blockchain thing could be the solution for everything and so she was reminding us that this is not the case. And she was also talking about that we will need policies and regulations in this new digitally transforming space. Yeah, so also wonderful talk. So thank you very much, Francisca. And uh, after that, we had a panel. And uh, in this panel, we had uh, four different people. So we had Vincerf, we had Catherine Jamal, Peter Weibel, and luckily had to leave 
early, so therefore we had Jonas Bedford Strom, who did a great job in the panel, and we had Marty Hellman. And uh, in this panel, we not only discussed about the effects of the digital transformation, but we also became witnesses of the first Diffie and uh, Hellman here, not key exchange, but seed exchange. And that not enough. We also witnessed the first Diffie Hellman aspirin exchange, which was quite fun. Because I said at the beginning, the Diffie Hellman key exchange is that thing that you're using all the time when you're securely interacting with the internet. So for me, the most interesting point in the panel was made by Jonas. And the Jonas was talking about that for people, work is giving dignity. So only when you have work, you feel valuable, or not only, but especially also it's something important from work is that you feel valuable. And if this digital transformation reduces the workload so people don't have work anymore, this will become a problem. And so in the follow-up of the symposium in 2018, now in 2019, we collaborate with the Stuttgart at Zukunftsform and uh, so there, the topic this year is also Arbeit 4.0. So how this work life develops under the digital transformation. Okay, yeah, so here you see, by the way, the second place. So this is Villa Bosch inside. So here we were having the talks on this day and this was also a fantastic location. So thank you very much to the Klaus Chira Foundation and Beate Spiegel for being allowed to be there. Yeah, we had lively discussions as you can see here. And uh, this is Jonas again here. Yeah, thank you very much for jumping in for the for the panel. And uh, great discussions, great food, and uh, was all wonderful. One group I do not want to forget here, and this is this group that I'm also the university relation mentor of the group. This is namely the student chapter of Munich. And so you guys were doing a great job, not only for the video filming, but especially for the video filming. And all the videos that you see from the event, they were filmed by these three here. Thank you very much. And uh, that brings me already to the end. So I hope that you learned a little bit about this digital transformation, so that it's happening now, that it's happening everywhere, and that everybody is affected, and so that you definitely should care. Because at the moment, you still have to, the possibility to shape this digital transformation. In the near future, this might not be the case anymore because then decisions are already taken. So now is the time to act. And therefore, also, whenever you can, vote. Because with your vote, you can really change things. And I want to close with another example here. And uh, this example is, Heute werde ich fast angeschrien, wenn es keinen Empfang gibt. Today I almost get yelled at when there's no reception. And this is said by someone from a Telefonica, so a telephone company in Germany. And it's about mobile reception, so when your smartphone doesn't have connection. And so some years ago there were lots of protests in Germany. And it seems that this changed because people see the access to the internet as something very important. And uh, therefore they want to have this connectivity now. This shows that internet and connectivity, digital transformation really arrived at all parts of society. Okay, and coming closer to the end, we had different Turing Award winners. So here are they, and it's also given what they were awarded the Turing Awards for. And uh, in my series where I interview different people, I interviewed all four here. David, I did not interview yet. Maybe we'll have the pleasure in the future. And uh, they all have very nice views on this digital transformation. And look at the channel, then you will see the videos of the interviews of these people here. OK, so what does it mean being human with algorithms? I asked some of my friends. And so the next video shows Alexander Carded, and so he is running the startup grand Barcelona. So this is a 
chapter for startup people. He's organizing great events there. And let's see what he says, what it means being human with algorithms. That's a very tricky question. I am an engineer, right? And uh, I tend to see the world as it's full of algorithms. So there's been always algorithms uh, up there. They just changed in the in the shape some generations ago. It was just for the for certain elite. But nowadays, everybody is using applications like Uber, like Tinder, Deliveroo, whatever. It will eventually bring many, many benefits for the generations to come. Yeah, it's a very nice view. Thank you, Alex. And uh, I was also asking uh, someone else, someone German, was bedeutet Mensch sein mit Algorithmen? And I was asking this question to Achim Killer, who many of you will know from his radio shows on Deutschland Radio, Bayerischer Rundfunk, and so on. And let's see what he says. Was es bedeutet Mensch sein mit Algorithmen? Das ist eine Herausforderung. Also ich muss schauen dass ich mit diesen Algorithmen mitkomme, dass ich derjenige bin, der die Algorithmen anwendet äh, und nicht einer bin, auf den Algorithmen yeah. angewandt werden. Ja, yeah, so for the English speaking people, he says like, I have to make sure that I apply algorithms and not algorithms are applied on me. Also a very good point. Thanks Achim for the interview. You can also find it in the channel. And this brings me now to the website. So our activities did not only happen for the symposium, but they're a continuous activity. And the main thing on our website, which I started in 2018, is this interview series here. And in this interview series, we are talking to people, we are asking them to give us their personal view on this digital transformation. And with this personal view, we try to capture a little bit what is relevant for them to help you understanding which are the effects on you and which are viewpoints that are relevant there. And here we see Jonas, so Gerhard was interviewing him. And we also see Michael Mörike, who is um, actually running this Stuttgarter Zukunfts Symposium, which is the thing that we will have our German chapter of the ACM and Summit Algorithm event in 2019 and hopefully also in the future. Okay, so as said before, the activities continue. You can follow us on Twitter, then you get all the information when we have new videos, when we have new articles on the website. Go to the website, so it's under these two URLs. You can also visit us on LinkedIn here. You can subscribe on Facebook. And if you want, you can also write us an email. And Yeah, this somehow concludes the 50 years of the German chapter of the ACM year. And I'm already looking forward to the next 50 years together with the German chapter. And if you ever get the chance, come to Heidelberg. Great place with our symposium even greater, but the city, go there. Wonderful. Thank you very much for the attention and for looking at the video. And I am personally looking forward to getting in contact with you, exchanging with you about this digital transformation, how it changes your life, how it changes our society. It's important. Get active. <laughs>